In this first of a four-part series, I'll introduce you to a typical German Altstadt, explain why Kassel was bombed in World War II, and share with you the recollections of a woman who survived the bombing night of 1943. Hello, good people. My name is Janice and welcome to Dignity. If you're new here, check out this channel trailer and please consider subscribing. Welcome to Fritzlau, a typical German Altstadt or Old Town. Established in the 10th century, Fritzlau has a medieval center ringed by a wall with numerous watchtowers and boasts the highest remaining urban defense tower in Germany. One tower gives us this view to the steeples of the Gothic church of the old Franciscan monastery, which today is the Protestant Paris church. Many houses in the town center date from the 15th to the 17th centuries, known as Frackerkauser or half-timbered houses. Time has caused them to bow with crooked joints. Domplatz is the plaza of the parish church. A quick ride brings us to nearby Kassel. First documented in 913 AD, Kassel is home to Berg Park Wilhelmsur, the largest hillside park in Europe and the second largest hillside park in the world. At its highest point is a monument complex with a copper statue of Hercules. It is from this point where you can see the city and in the foreground Schloss Wilhelmsur, a castle which King Jerome Bonaparte, Napoleon's younger brother, used as his summer home. Berg Park also contains Schloss Leuvenberg, a Baroque-style castle. Castle is host to Documenta, an exhibition of contemporary art that takes place there every five years. A walk along Schöner Aussicht, the German translation for Bellevue, we find the Bellevue Palace, former residence of King Bonaparte, and centuries later, the Brothers Grimm. Schöner Aussicht overlooks Kassel as well as nearby Schloss Langerie, another Baroque style castle once used as a summer home. Remember that building, something happened there a few months before Bomben knocked. Let's take a left here onto Friedrichstrasse and travel back in time. During World War II, Kassel's important military industrial sites, its aircraft and tank making facilities were conscripted for mobilization. Those plants were the reasons why Kassel was a bombing target during the war. Meet Gisela Baumert, an eyewitness to the night that the city burned to the ground. I was 19 years old and lived with my parents. My father, who was stationed as a soldier in France, was home on vacation. When the air raid siren alarmed, the three of us went to the basement. In the sky, the so-called Christmas trees could be seen, which lit up everything, and sounds of flying and impacts could be heard in the distance. After several hours, my father and I ventured upstairs. The sky was red and the whole town was ablaze. Sparks the size of tennis balls flew through the air. We saw our house burn. The water pipes were destroyed. Helplessly, we had to watch our house burn down. My uncle lived in another city and made a room available to us in his house. My very sick mother died four weeks later. My father and I returned to Castle. We got shot at by low-flying planes, but we survived. This is Miss Baumert today. She's 94 years old, a widow, and has two adult sons. Now, let's take a quick run over to A to Z. A 
A to Z is one of the largest reservoirs in Germany. It's located on the Fulda River tributary of Ada behind the Ada Z Dam. British bombers targeted the dam, which was a complete surprise to the German military because they were convinced that the dam walls could not be endangered by bombs. But the British Royal Air Force had a special bomb that could jump over water like a flat stone, sink in front of its target and detonate. This is Elizabeth Schliebler. She's 91 years old and grew up in Ada along the Fulda River, which runs downstream to Kassel. She's lived there most of her life. In 1943, Miss Schliebler was 16 years old when she experienced the May 17th catastrophe. Anyone who lived on the banks of the Fulda knew that floods threatened them. We were warned, but no one could imagine how high the waters would rise. It had risen at a furious rate. The brown broth stood two meters high in our living room. Her parents' drugstore was also underwater, as was the neighboring butcher's shop. The family was temporarily accommodated by their godmother. We cleaned up and had no idea that things would soon get a lot worse. The consequences of the floods were only eliminated in September of that year. My father was proud that the pipes were now under plaster but that joy did not last long. On the night of the bombing on October 22, 1943, the house was badly hit and destroyed. And in December 1943, her father died in another bomb attack. This is a recognizance map of Kassel taken by the British Army in early 1943. Notice how the Fulda divides the city. When the tidal wave rolled through Ada Valley in May, it reached Kassel nine hours later. On her way, she killed 68 people, two of them in Kassel, 65-year-old Herman Rasch and Willem Genecht, aged 52. They had been on duty as part of the fire and air raid police and wanted to rescue trapped people from an apartment. The men were in a rowboat where the bed of the Fulda stopped and the flooded bank areas began. The boat bounced against a metal stand, sprang a leak, and got caught up into a whirlpool. Their bodies were not found until the day after the tsunami had left Castle behind. I hope you found this video insightful. If you have, please give it a like. Write hashtag Team Dignity in the comments below. Share the video, and if you haven't yet, subscribe. Check out this playlist for more videos. And next week, we'll visit Bright Now. In the meantime, be well and remember to live your life with dignity. Bye bye.